like to be able to bend their toes, uh, but toes can be straightened and permanently fixed so that they're straight. And that's what may have to be done. Hammer toes can come back if you have other imbalances in your feet. If there's a muscle imbalance, the toes will contract back again. Okay. Um, I had weight gain. Could that have also caused it? It's hard to say. Um, I don't think weight gain makes a real big difference in terms of hammer toe deformities. But there are changes in your foot that you can, can recur. Bunions can recur. Uh, bunions are a deformity that is of imbalance. It's, you know, surgery corrects a deformity, it does not correct imbalance. Uh, that's why people need orthotics, even after surgery, to keep their foot balanced. It's like wearing a retainer after having sure, braces sure. on your teeth. Well, you know. the thing, if it is the way my toe was before the surgery, is the knuckle went upward, and now the whole toes are laying sideways on either foot. Right. So. Well, without seeing your foot, obviously it's hard to tell. Okay. I would suggest you contact our state society and be forwarded to a podiatrist that can help you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. And that uh, phone number and website are right on the screen there, so we encourage people to uh, log on to the website or call the 800 number. She brought up uh, fallen arches, and I wanted to ask you about that because that was on one of the topics that we wanted to talk about. Right. That's that's a very obscure term. A lot of people don't know what that really refers to. It sounds like one of those terms that means one thing and is really another thing. Tell us what a fallen arch is. A fallen arch, well, flat feet. You know, people come to the office all the time and saying, listen, I've got flat feet. What can you do for it? Well, if the flat foot isn't painful, probably nothing. Um, we really treat pain. We don't necessarily treat cosmetic foot situations. Um, if your foot is flat, you could probably live your life fine. You could probably run marathons. Um, it actually, people that have high arch feet have more problems than people that have no arch at all. Um, but if you do have arch pain, you know, orthotics are way to, the way to go. What orthotics are, are custom molded inserts. They're not the stuff you buy in the store um, that are, you know, the shelf type of things. Orthotics are a completely different entity. They're a custom made object, which a mold is made of your feet. It's sent off to a lab. It's specifically made for you. It's like eyeglasses for your feet in, in a way. And it brings the ground up to your foot to, you know, to keep your bones aligned and for you to walk without pain. Cars, braces, and now... Uh, Every analogy you'll make today. All right. anything, anything that we can do to make things clear for our viewers. Um, finally, um, we, we do see in the elderly, for instance, if... Uh, falls are very common, so yeah. you read it in the, in the medical literature and the, and the popular press about hip fractures, for instance. But stress fractures in the foot can also happen because somebody will trip over something or fall mm -hmm. or something like that. And how painful is that for somebody and what kinds of remedies do you offer for, uh, for someone who has that kind of problem? Well, stress fractures are more a, a thing of uh, constant trauma, repeat trauma. Um, people that are weekend athletes or people that suddenly decide to start an exercise program when they've been pretty sedentary. Um, fractures in the elderly are, are, are common from falls, uh, metatarsal fractures, digital fractures. Um, you always hear about the person getting up in the middle of the night needing to go to the bathroom and they mm -hmm. bump their toe into the, the bed or the chair or whatever. So digital fractures are very common in the elderly um, more than anything else I see. Okay, and one of the callers brought up another topic that I wanted to make sure we touched on, and that's uh, you were talking about the difference between a, a corn and a callus. Right. That's a common uh, confusion. Confusion. There. So, right. so tell us again what the difference is. We didn't really touch on corns yet, so why don't you touch on those first? Corns are hard areas on the top of the toes or the end of the toes. Uh, calluses occur under the ball of the foot, under the metatarsal heads. So they're completely different entities. Um, they're basically a problem of friction. Um, or pressure from an imbalance in your foot, uh, a very, very common deformity, um, and a very difficult deformity to treat for callus-wise. You know, there are obviously insoles into the shoe. We talked about that previously. We talked about using a pumice stone or emery board. Um, but th those are the most common at-home type of remedies to do. Uh, a podiatrist will treat those in a different way. Great, great. And we just have a couple more minutes left. We might get another call who will we'll, we'll squeeze in. but sort of cap off the uh, the show for us and, t and, and and go over the more common sorts of problems that you see in your office in Oak Lawn. Okay. Well, we talked about the arthritis ones. We talked about the ingrown toenails, the fungal infections. We talked about, I don't know if we talked about ulcerations too much. Um, we talked about diabetes a little bit. Ulc diabetic ulcerations are very, very common. Um, even uh, decubitus ulcers can occur in feet, either at the heel for people that are 
uh, bedridden is a very common problem. And today I saw a patient that had a, an, a pressure ulceration from a shoe that's too tight. On the, both sides of their foot, they were developing an ulceration on the, uh, along the big toe and along the small toe, um, just by wearing improper shoes. An ulceration is well, like a... A breakdown uh, in the skin. Sort of a lesion of some kind. A breakdown in the skin where mm -hmm. the soft tissue even can become deep enough that bone is visible. So uh, that's a very uh, common and debilitating problem. Okay, and, and when you see these patients, um, especially for um, ulcerations like that, mm -hmm. what kinds of treatment do you, do you provide for them? Well, the most important thing is offload the weight-bearing area that where the ulceration does exist. So you shift the dynamics of the foot? Right, a pad on the foot or a proper uh, surgical shoe that has a pad into mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, treating the ulceration, obviously, is, is a very deep topic that we can go into, but I don't know if I have enough time for that. But it basically involves debriding the tissue, applying topical antibiotics, perhaps oral antibiotics, and decrease, you know, offload the area until it heals. We did get one last card. They didn't want to go on the air, but um, they did ask, what is the difference between a, a wart and a callus? Okay. A callus occurs under a weight-bearing area. A wart is caused by a virus. A wart can occur under a weight-bearing area or a non-weight-bearing area. A uh, wart's caused by a virus, and the treatment for a wart is very, very different than a callus. Uh, but they're completely two different entities. Okay. That'll wrap it up for this show um, about geriatric foot health. Dr. David Finkelstein from Oakland, thanks for joining us. Um, um, just a reminder, if anybody wants a referral to a podiatrist in the Illinois or Chicago area, they can call our 800, 800 number, 888-869-3338, or go to the website, that's www.ipma.net. We'll see you next month.